Hello class, and uh, today we're going to talk about species. And I know you've all heard this word, but um, we're just going to explore the definition and the limitations of that definition as well today. First, let's start out with a really important word, and that is taxonomy. It sounds maybe complicated, but all it means is classification. And in biology, when we talk about taxonomy, we are specifically talking about the classification of organisms and taking into consideration the relationships between those organisms. So here is just a classification for a whale, and it's looking at all of its relationships with other species and how closely it resembles those species in order to classify it. The species itself is the very basic grouping in biological taxonomy. So when we talk about biological taxonomy and we talk about classifying organisms, the most basic fundamental grouping is the species. So what is a species? Well, we said that the basic grouping in biological taxonomy is the species. But what does that mean? Here is a group of organisms that are part of a species. Um, a species is a group of organisms that is capable of mating with one another under natural conditions to produce fertile and viable offspring. So these individuals, these organisms, are able to do just that, mate with one another under natural conditions to produce fertile and viable offspring. Um, natural conditions is an important condition to think about in that we're not talking about captivity, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. When uh, certain organisms are separated by different, uh, for different reasons, um, they are not able to produce under natural conditions. And um, being in captivity or uh, some other imposed way of breeding with one another does not constitute um, the definition of organism. Now. These organisms are all part of the same species, yet they look very, very different from one another. And that is called polymorphism. Poly, meaning more than one, and morphism, form. Variation in form. When two or more variations exist in the same population, we call those polymorphisms. And here's another example. We have the light peppered moth and the dark peppered moth. They are different forms of the same species of that population. Other examples of polymorphisms are male and female. They are different forms within the same population. Now it's important to look at uh, variations in populations and why those might be occurring. We've just talked about polymorphisms and the, the differences in forms. But there are also other reasons, uh, other contributions to these variations. Geography is a really big one. Here we can see um, some variation, obviously, from one organism to the next in our own species. And some of those are due to geographic uh, variations when populations are uh, separate from one another and the genetic pool is separated. Uh, some of those differences come out and are expressed in different ways, and we can see that here, as well as the individual variation from one organism to the next. We are able to see the individual variation much more easily in our own species than we are probably with plants or animals. Here are some more variations amongst ladybugs, and uh, those are, they could be due to geographic variation, they could just be simple polymorphisms or individual variations. So one more concept to think about, hybrids, and um, probably most of you are very familiar with that term, simply meaning a cross or a mix of two things. And when we're talking about hybrids in biology, we're just simply talking about interbreeding between related species. So these are two species, different species of canines. This is a coyote, this is a dog. Um, they are rarely... Uh, they rarely breed and produce offspring simply because they often do not meet in order to do that. But when they do, uh, we get something called a koi dog. And 
The reason that koi dogs have not become their own species largely is because it would be very rare for one koi dog to meet another koi dog and then produce offspring. So how do species remain separate? That brings up another question. And we have about three different situations that we're going to talk about. One, potential mates do not meet, either due to geography or due to behavior. Perhaps one species is nocturnal and another is um, not, and, and so they simply do not meet. Here's an example of where mates do not meet, and I suppose you can guess simply from your no, your own knowledge why they do not meet. They are geographically not in the same location. There has never been a reported instance where they have met and produced offspring in the wild, although it has happened in captivity. Another um, reason that species do not meet would be that potential mates meet, but they do not breed. So either they are structurally too different or behaviorally too different. For example, a blue spruce and a columbine are in the same location, but they will not breed to produce offspring. Um, third, potential mates meet and breed, but they do not produce fertile or viable offspring. And one example of that would be a mule. And I'm sure you're aware that a female horse and a male donkey can produce a mule, but it is almost always sterile. So in that case, uh, we do not consider that offspring a new species. So th therein lies some of the quandary we have with our species concept. It is a difficult concept because it, one, it does not take into account organisms that don't even produce sexually. So it is a very limited definition in that sense. Uh, it, it only addresses sexually reproducing organisms. And um, other problems with the species concept, what about the rare instance that a mule produces offspring, um, which it's rare, but it does happen. So how do we uh, think about that? We've just said that um, it, that a mule is not a, via, or a a fertile offspring, typically, so it is not a new species. But what about the case when it does produce an, uh, an offspring? Then how do we think about that? Well, we don't really have a good answer for that. Uh, what about other hybrids that are maybe intermediate populations, some being viable and fertile and others not, kind of similar to the mule situation? Another problem is um, simply the slow, unmeasurable changes that occur in a species over time are not taken into account in the species concept. So hopefully you are able to define taxonomy and species and um, polymorphisms. And if you would like to go above and beyond, here are a few ideas for you. And I welcome you to come up with your own ideas. I think those are often really great and terrific ideas. So I'll see you in class and can't wait to see what you know.